In this experiment we're going to look at integrated circuits and we're going to build some experiments from the course notes and implement them on our breadboards. Um, we're going to first look at the, the, the chips themselves. This is the type of chip that we're going to use, the type of chip packaging we're going to use. It's, a, it's the DIP uh, packaged uh, chip which is, means plastic dual line and uh, the, the pin package and um, the pins are spaced at three tenths of an inch apart and you can see that you have a little circle here at the very top um, that indicates that that's pin one. So there's a little notch at the very top of the chip and there's a circle there that indicates that this, this, this pin here is pin one so that we know how to identify it. We have to be very careful that we uh, order the dip package the dip package ships when we're working with, in, in our experiments and so on and when you're doing your projects later on. Um, there are other packaging types available. This is, this is an SOIC which is a small outline integrated circuit and you can see it's of a, a considerably smaller scale. Uh, the inside of the chip might be exactly the same, it might do exactly the same function so just the plastic packaging and the pin layout and so on is what's different in this format. Again it's got a circle to indicate uh, that pin 1 but you can see it's considerably smaller uh, than, the, than the dip package chip. Um, it is possible that the chip that we that, that we want to use is only available in a dip package and in, in which case we can use a, a board like this. It's, um, it's a converter board. It allows us to, it takes, basically it takes in, um, we can use these type of legs to convert into a, uh, um, uh, to allow us to plug it into our breadboard. And on both sides of the board you, you see this, this side is, this side is 0.8 dot pitch and the other side is 0.6. Uh, so in the in the point six, this is a point six uh, uh, millimeters. So you can see that we'd line up the uh, we'd line up the chip uh, against the the channels and push the solder onto the onto the particular pins, and then uh, we would then be able to use these pins here in a more accessible way on our breadboard. It is possible that certain types of chips that we need to use are only available in SOIC form and that means that in, in that packaging format which means that we we would have to use a converter board like this okay so we're going to use um, we're, we're going to use the dip format for our uh, the dip packaging format for our experiments so each each chip has an identifying number and here we can see that this one is the MM74HCT08N the letters all mean something the MM in this case uh, refers to the manufacturer uh, which is Fairchild Semiconductor. It could also be uh, letters like SN, which would refer to Texas Instruments, for example. The 74 is the way that you know. I suppose this is the this is the giveaway in terms of finding the number that makes sense on your chip. The 74, and we skip the letters in between. 7408 refers to the particular type of chip. This is a quad uh, two input AND gate. So there's four two input AND gates in this particular chip. The N at the end refers to the packaging type, so we, we know that this is a DIP uh, packaging type, so the N refers to DIP, the, the, the dual in, inline uh, packaging type. And finally we have the HCT in the middle, which refers to the, the particular logic family that the chip belongs to. In this particular case it's a high speed CMOS uh, with uh, TTL logic levels, so uh, this is the particular type of, of chip that we're going to be using for our experiments. The first thing we need to do is we need to connect up the power to the chip. So I've set up the rails so that we, we have easy access and this particular chip, pin 7 has to be connected to ground and pin 14 has to be connected to VCC. So here we're going to connect pin 14 to VCC and pin 7 to ground. Okay. So our chip is powered. I haven't connected the supply yet, but um, the chip is powered. And then we have, now we have on our input on pins 1, 2 and 3 again. We can tell our, our first pin by the circle that's just visible there on the top of the chip. We have pin 1, 2 are inputs and pin 3 is our output. So we need some way of seeing our output, so we're going to use uh, an LED for this. So I'm just going to use an LED uh, on pin 3 connect the LED, uh, well this is a piece of wire, I'm going to bring the LED over here and I'll just use a small resistor tied to ground as before and then we just bridge that, again remember the longer leg is the positive is connected to pin 3 and the shorter leg is connected through ground 
it's right to ground to the little resistor. So now we have our, 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 our circuit and we can test it and we can say, well, let's connect both of our inputs to be high. And in this particular case, when we, when we turn on the power, you should see very quickly that uh, our, we get a, a value of uh, our LED should light. So connect pins one and two, both connect both to ground, uh, both to sorry, both to VCC to five volts. And when we when we we turn on our power supply now, you'll see that the LED lights. I'm just going to leave the power supply lit, and I'm going to disconnect uh, one of my inputs and connect it to ground. And there you'll see that now that it's connected to ground, the LED is off. Uh, if I do it on the same with the other pins, it'll have the same effect. You'll know from the the, lot, the true table for a, uh, a an AND gate that both inputs have to be high for the LED to be lit. So if I again set both inputs to be high, then we can light our LED like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, moving these wires around is a little bit awkward, so let's connect in two switches. So I'm just going to turn off the power and connect in two switches. So I'm going to use these uh, push button switches and. Uh, just make sure you have them in the correct uh, orientation and we're going to connect these across uh, I'm going to connect the first one so that it's, it's touching pin it's, it's in the same row as pin 1 so that means that I'm only going to have to connect to the other side of the, of the switch just make sure that they're a little fiddly they might come out and I'm going to put the other switch uh, right beside it okay, so we have two switches Both push them in well into the boards and these buttons are going to provide my inputs and we should see that when our circuit, work, our circuit is connected that we get um, a high only, uh, the LED lights, we get a high only when both buttons are pressed at the same time together. So we need to connect up to say, well, well let's say, well, let's connect up a high to this, to the, this side of this uh, pin, make sure we go into the right place, and to the other side, let's connect up our, um, let's make sure it goes in, and to the other side of our switch, let's connect that to the second input. Uh, the second switch is already connected into pin 1 and we just need to connect the other side of it into our, our high rail. Okay. Okay. It reaches. So I'm not sure that's going too well. Okay, so it should, be, it should reach. Now, we turn on our circuit you're going to see something unusual happen. It doesn't work. And if we press the buttons and we will see that, well, the LED nearly always stays on, so it's having no effect. But you should see that the LED flickers on and off uh, as it goes. So um, you see that it's not very stable. Now, the reason for this is because. Um, well, let you think about for a minute what the reason for this is. Why, why is it unstable? So why does it seem to flick between on and off as I'm pressing the buttons, even though with no input, um, it, should, it should at the moment be off. You think about that 